In today's video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this nifty little neon hot dog sign. This is how to film a YouTube video or anything. In the comments of my last video, Popcorn commented, hey dude, I saw the outro you made for Noodle and was wondering how you made it. Well, this is the outro he's talking about. Now this is pretty simple. I designed it in Photoshop and then I brought it into After Effects and put some of the glow and the flicker on it. Rather than make the Noodle logo again, I decided to do something a little simpler and went with just a simple hot dog logo. Uh, let's go ahead and open Photoshop. Go ahead and select new. Let's make our uh, width 1920 and the height 1080. And the resolution 300. And let's make the background black. Okay, go ahead and create it. Okay, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create a new fill layer by clicking on layer new fill layer, solid color, and let's call it gray. And then we'll just go over here and pick a nice middle gray. Okay, now go over to the shape tool and let's click on rounded rectangle tool. Let's change the radius to 200. Oh, fill is black and let's go ahead and create a nice bun shape. Okay, got a nice hot dog bun. Uh, let's go ahead and make one more of these that's a little bit skinnier and longer and we'll create the wiener for our hot dog. Let's make it even a little longer. Okay, now we can put that right about in the middle. Now the thing about Photoshop is it has the ability to make shapes, but not outlines of shapes. So to get our outline, we're going to have to add strokes to both of these. Let's call, let's go ahead and rename these layers first. We'll call this one wiener and this one bun. Okay. On the bun, let's double click that. That brings up the layer style. And what we want to do is check stroke. Okay, and now uh, make sure you highlight this layer too by clicking on it. And <clears throat> we want the size of our stroke to be about, I don't know, we'll try 18. And we want the color to be white. Okay, now you can see what we have over here. It's starting, it has the outline of our shape. So if I click the visibility off this top wiener layer, we can see we have the hot dog bun. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to the wiener layer. So double click, layer styles. We'll go uh, click the stroke and it looks like we're all set. The size is 18, the color's white, click it off. Okay, now let's go ahead and move the wiener layer below the bun layer. And then we can kind of start adjusting things like we like it. Okay, that's looking like a nice hot dog. Uh, if I click, if I hold down shift, I can highlight both of these and move these two layers together. And what we're going to do now is add a little bit of curvature. So in order to do that, we want to rasterize both of these layers. So let's go ahead and leave those highlighted. I'm going to right click both those layers and say rasterize layers. Now what happens if we try to bend the shape without rasterizing it, it changes, it warps the uh, stroke and makes it look really wonky. And in order to sh change the shape of these, we're going to have to do one at a time. So let's go ahead and do the bun first. Click on the bun, highlight that. Now we're going to hit Command T so we can change the transformation and click on this warp layer button right here. Now let's go ahead and grab the edges of this. Grab this top right corner. I'm going to move it straight up a little ways. I'm going to grab this next midpoint and push it up as well, about the same distance. And this next uh, intersection, grab it, pull it up about the same, maybe out just a hair. And this bottom corner, we're gonna put it straight up and out to maintain that bun. I'm actually squishing this too much, it looks like. Let me grab 
some of these and pull them back down so that we can maintain that nice hot dog bun shape. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to this side, straight up with the top corner, pretty much straight up with that, maintaining about the same distance, hopefully. And this one, bottom corner, up and out. Okay, let's bring this guy back down a little bit. Okay, now when we're happy with the shape, we can click on this check mark. And if I uh, turn the wiener layer off by clicking the visibility, we got a pretty nice bun there. Let's go ahead, highlight the wiener layer, and we're gonna shape it as well. So hit Command T. Same thing, warp the layer, and we are going to pull this guy up. The next one up and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's do the same thing straight up on this guy. Uh, uh, pull him down a little bit. And then out there. Okay, so now we've got a pretty good shape going. Next, let's go ahead and colorize these two layers. So before we affect this, we're gonna to have to uh, rasterize the layer style again. So go ahead and right click on the bun layer, find rasterize layer style and click on that. Now go down here to this little half circle, click on that and we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and pick hue and saturation. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is click this little icon here which will allow it to only affect the layer immediately below it, which is the bun layer. Go ahead and click colorize. And we're gonna need to bring the lightness down right away. Let's go down to uh, minus 60 or so. Otherwise, no matter what color you choose, it's gonna be white if you don't bring the lightness down. Um, now we can bring the saturation up and let's pick a hue that feels really hot dog bunish, but also neon which is probably gonna be kind of a yellow, yellow brown. Uh, let's lean more toward that. Okay, let's go ahead and really bump up the saturation. Let's bring the lightness back up some. And that's starting to look pretty good. Okay, something like that, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to the wiener layer. Okay, on the wiener layer, what we wanna do is rasterize that, right click, rasterize layer style, and let's go ahead and pick hue and saturation. Remember to affect only the layer below it. Colorize, bring the saturation down maybe to 45, or sorry, the lightness down to 45. Let's bring the saturation up some, and let's pick kind of a more reddish color for the hot dog. There we go, saturation up a little more. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. Oh, and by the way, the gray layer was just so we could see that shape before we added the stroke. We don't need it anymore. Let's click the eyeball off and the gray layer is gone. And that is what our logo looks like. Now what we want to do is actually save the wiener and the bun separately. So let's go ahead. Now, here, so here's the problem. If I turn the bun layer off, we don't want to have, see this part that's hidden of the wiener? We want that to remain hidden. So in order to not have the whole wiener saved, what we want to do is go ahead and highlight both these layers, hit Command J for copy layer. And what we're gonna do is bring the lightness all the way down on this. Okay, and that's effectively gonna block out that line that we don't want. Now you see this faint yellow uh, outline, that's because the yellow button is still showing. We'll just turn that off temporarily by clicking on the original bun layer and turning the visibility off. Oh, how do I have two copies of it? Okay, I don't know how I have two copies, but we'll turn that layer off too. 
in fact, let's delete that. I must have hit Command J twice. Okay, now this is our hot dog layer. Let's go ahead and just save this as a JPEG. So go ahead, hit File, Save As. We're going to call it a JPEG. I'm going to save it to the desktop so it's easy to find. And we are going to call it uh, Wiener. Okay, save. And I don't. We don't have to save it at maximum resolution. I'll just pick ten. Okay, now let's go ahead and turn that black bun off. Let's turn our regular bun on, and let's turn the Wiener layer off. Okay, now we're just going to save the bun layer. So go ahead and set file, save as. Uh, we'll call it bun, and change it to a JPEG. And go ahead and hit click save. Okay. Now we're actually done with Photoshop. We're going to move into After Effects now. Go ahead and close Photoshop. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and save it in case we need to come back, and we'll just call it Hot Dog Neon Images. Save. Okay, Photoshop is done. Let's go ahead and open After Effects. Now in After Effects, we're going to add some of the glow and the animation. So go ahead and click on Composition, New Composition. Uh, we'll call it Neon Hot Dog. Uh, let's change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. Let's make the background black. Click OK. The frame rate, whatever you normally use, I actually use uh, 24.97. No, 23.97. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in our elements by going to the desktop and we bun and wiener. Open. Okay, let's go ahead and just bring both of those in to our composition. Let's drag it down here to the timeline. And for some reason, it's not matching up. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, wiener and bun. Okay, now you can see that because it's a JPEG, uh, we are not seeing our bun. So let's go ahead and on the wiener layer, Stop snickering. Uh, we're going to change the mode to screen. So that the has all these blending modes. If you don't see this, go down to the toggle switches right here. And if that's what you see, click toggle switches. There's just two modes here. So we want it so we can see the blending mode, change it from normal to screen. And what that's going to do is make anything that's black completely transparent. And so now we're seeing through the black. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Whoa. And we can see the bun. Uh, that is going to be great. If we had something below the bun layer, we could change that one also to screen, but there's no need to do that here. Okay. So what we want to do now is add some glow to this. And actually... Oh, and, and the other thing I did was on the composition settings, I made it... I didn't mean to make it two minutes. Let's change that duration to uh, 22 seconds. And the reason I choose 22 seconds is because on YouTube, they allow you to have end screens now, which last 20 seconds. And you, that's where we use Noodles logo. And that's where you want to use a logo like this. You want to maximize that 20 seconds to get people to click on more videos on your channel. OK. so. These are actually uh, kind of big. <clears throat> this logo is kind of big. I'm going to go ahead and highlight both of these. Hit S for scale. And let's scale that down. Something like that. I'm going to hit Shift P for position. And we'll move it up. And let's bring the scale up just a little bit more. 
And that'll leave us room for a subscribe button and a couple videos down here. Now you're thinking, wait, what, what happened to our uh, nice black background? So let's go ahead up to layer, make a new solid, and we'll just call it background BKG. It's already black. That's what we want. And okay. And let's move that below the other two layers. Okay, so now it looks a lot prettier again. Let's go ahead and go over to the effects and presets. If you don't see that, you can go up to window and make sure effects and presets is check marked, which, you know, it was, now it is. And we're going to search in here for glow. So we want to take just glow, not VR glow, and let's drop it on Wiener. Okay, so already you start to see a glow, but what we want to do is go ahead and uh, raise the intensity a little bit. And let's raise the radius. Let's play with the radius a little bit till, so you can get it really insane, but let's Let's do something like that. Yeah, let's do a real faint outer glow and then go ahead and uh, hit Command D to duplicate the glow. And let's make the glow intensity a little higher, but the radius much lower. In fact, we'll make the intensity much lower until you get something you like. Okay, that's not too bad. Maybe we're overdoing it a little. Let's bring the radius down a little. And let's bring this radius down a little as well. And intensity down. I don't know, something like that. It's kind of a eyeball thing. Okay, and if we're happy with that, what we can do is take, highlight both these two glows. In fact, I could cl close them. Uh, hit Command C for copy. Now let's go ahead to the bun layer, highlight that, come up here to the effect controls and hit Command V and paste it and voila, we already have it. Uh, looks like the bun is a little bit intense though. So let's go ahead and drop the radius. And you can just kind of monkey with them till you're happy with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some flicker to this. So what we want to do now is just mess with the intensity. That's all we're going to do. What we're going to do here is, uh, let's do the wiener first. Hit T, which will bring up the opacity. And we want to click on the stopwatch and that'll allow us to add keyframes. So let's just go ahead, maybe a second or so. Uh, let's add a keyframe right here. Boom. Let's just move ahead one frame. So on the preview window, and again, if you don't have this preview window, move ahead one spot. Uh, I'm gonna bring the opacity to zero here. I'm gonna move ahead again one spot and bring it all the way up to 100. I'm gonna move ahead a random amount uh, this time I'm going to click on 100, move ahead, I'll move ahead two frames and I'll drop the opacity to like 33. And then we'll move ahead another two frames, go back up to 100. Uh, <clears throat> just move ahead a little bit here, make another keyframe. Let's go all the way back down to zero. And I'll move ahead a bit and end it. Now what we want to do is, well here you can see what, what that does. It kind of creates that flicker. And this is supposed to be 100, sorry. Okay, so what we want that is to repeat for the whole 22 seconds, but we don't necessarily want to make all those keyframes again. So what we can do is hit the option 
and click on the stopwatch. And we want to add a little expression here, and it is called loop out. So loop, make the O capital on out. Uh, make a parentheses and a quotation. Type cycle, quotation, close the parentheses. And what that'll do is just repeat this throughout. So even though we're going down here, we can see that we are still getting some uh, flicker on that. Okay, something's wrong in here. Oh, right here. Okay, so what happened here is this last expression should be 100. This should be 0, 100. So it, it'll just take the average intensity between two points. And so most of the time we want it at 100%, but we want these little flickers to come on. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing to the bun, but we're going to uh, randomize it a little so it's flickering at a different rate. So let's go ahead and uh, oh, hit T for opacity. Click on the stopwatch. Let's add a keyframe here. Let's move ahead one. Drop the opacity to... Whoops. Drop the opacity to zero. Oh, did I click the wrong one? Okay, so start over. Click the opacity. Let's make it 100. Move ahead one. Move it to zero. Move ahead one. Back to 100. Actually, let's bring that opacity back by clicking T so I can... Uh, just make sure we're doing it a little bit different. So let's click a keyframe there, move ahead one, let's go down to zero, move ahead one, back up to 100. That's supposed to be 100. That's supposed to be 100. And then uh, I had a little random amount and let's click a keyframe here. Let's go two frames this time and just only drop it to 33% again, a third. And you can play with it, see what you like. Let's do one out here somewhere. One frame, zero. Move ahead one more frame. 100% and let's make a keyframe there at 100%. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. So hit uh, option, click the stopwatch, type loop out cycle. And let's see how this is looking. So there you go. If uh, you want to make any changes, like maybe that bun intensity is too intense, you can just uh, turn one of these glow settings off. And then one by itself, you might need to bring it up a little. You can just play with it. And there you go. You have a glowing neon sign. Okay, and that's it for this video. I'm Jeff McClelland. This is how to film a YouTube video or anything, and we will see you next time. Be sure and add a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see in a future video.